designers, welcome back to my series where I'm walking you through the projects that I worked on in design school. We are up to my third year, which is the second to last year of classes. But for me, I actually did my degree a little differently because I took a, a break. I took a semester off after my second year. So my third year was kind of split across uh, both 2009 and 2010 in the end. Anyway, if this is the first you've ever heard of this series, that's okay. You can go back and watch the other two videos. They're going to give you more context on the degree that I studied and where I studied it, all that sort of stuff. But you don't really have to watch them in order. So just keep watching this one for now. In my third year, I decided I actually wanted to get into doing motion graphics. I had this vision of being someone who made music videos, that was really appealing to me, really exciting, and I specifically wanted to focus on doing like motion typography. So I took some motion graphics classes, you're going to see some of that in here, but some other like more regular graphic design work too, as well as some typography specific classes that I did. So let's take a look at my third year of design school work. Let's start with motion graphics. So I remember we were first like just learning the software and learning how to animate things and we had to take a word and like make it do stuff that represented the word, if that makes sense. So I was like having things move like it was a beat. Um, this one I don't think is very good. I think I was trying to create depth, but probably should have like blurred this stuff as well as faded it out. I don't know. I think we were allowed to put music in the third one. So I finally like, had, had an actual beat to work to. I still quite like this. I think I did it like you know, like sound levels going up and I had them glowing. I thought it was really fun, really cool. I just remember these classes would take forever because, ooh, here's some of that I did with different words. Because each one of these things, like you'd have to then, you'd do it on these slow computers because this was 2009. Um, and then you'd have to wait for them to export and all that. And I don't know, then you might not like what you ended up with. It was fun though. And this assignment was like exactly what I want to be doing, um, learning how to animate type. So that was cool. We ended up making like a movie trailer. So I did one for this movie called Street Dreams, which was a movie that I think Rob Durdick had made. Um, yeah, so this is like, like moving the camera angles and stuff like that. Yeah, there it is, P-Rod and Rob Durdick. And the changing the direction of things. Honestly, I think this is still pretty cool that the idea of the camera angles moving. I don't think I'd know how to do that now in After Effects. I'd have to like relearn it. But why was I so obsessed with this like grungy look to everything? Like literally every project that I did, I tried to make it like grungy like this. I don't know. This one, the directed by was meant to sort of look like a skateboard doing flips as it was driving along this like grungy road, I suppose. I don't know. And then I was really into this light effect writing on apparently. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was the second part of that um, motion typography brief. And for the next part of motion graphics, we've started to learn how to use the green screen. So we would go and film, <laughs> this is some of my classmates, um, having a little pretend fight. And then we had to like composite it onto a scene. Yeah, not very believable as you can see. <laughs> um, and then I think we had to make like an, an ad of something using, using motion graphics and composition. So this was one for um, Telecom, the you know phone company. I really like these colors actually. I think it looks kind of cool together. It just, I don't know. If you've watched more of these videos, the earlier ones in the series, you'll have heard me talk about craft, especially in that first year, how I was just really lacking on the finishing details. I think that's the same here too. Like this just, something about it just feels slightly messy. Like I rushed it a bit, which I mean, I probably did. Um, I was also probably lacking the skills to know exactly how to bring the idea to life too, but like, it just feels a bit awkward as this thing comes across, I don't know. I don't think I was naturally skilled in motion graphics, let's say that. So I loved motion graphics after motion graphics 1, but motion graphics 2, the assignments turned out to be mostly focused on the green screen, and that's when I realised that this course on, on my degree, anyways, wasn't taking me in the place that I wanted. Um, and so I switched back to a graphics major after after this, but yeah, I still made some cool things in this um, did Some like experiments with more effects like writing on color following people um, I yeah, I don't know. Oh, this one was fun This one was like, you know, as I stepped it was impacting the ground 
yeah, I don't know. With all of these, it feels the same. It's the same thing. Like the idea is there, but the craft of actually like that, you know, should look like a string of fabric, like following my shoe, right? And it just, it just didn't. Um, that was probably the closest that I got. I think I just didn't like, like with first year, have the patience to make things look exactly as it should. Apparently I don't have the final version of this in here, which is a shame, but we had to make like a documentary about, I don't remember what the brief was now, but I made this documentary about someone who was honestly the reason why I wanted to get into motion graphics. He did videos like, you might've seen this all time low video if you were into emo music in the 2000s like I was. <laughs> um, you know, these words attached to the people. I thought that was just so cool. Like that's the stuff I wanted to be doing. So I made this documentary thing like about that, which I apparently don't have the final version of. But yeah, we had to have that um, reference. I, I think that we then made stuff around. So that's why I was having like things following me as I walked. Yeah, motion graphics too wasn't my favorite. And I didn't continue with motion graphics after that. Just like I said about animation though in the last video that experimenting with video in this way was one of the reasons why I now have a YouTube channel. So, you know, it paid off. Typography, now that was a great class. Um, this is my first projects. Yep, um, I think that the, the point was to make type sort of look like the thing that it was representing. If you haven't heard of Hokey Pokey ice cream, by the way, which you probably haven't if you're not from New Zealand or Australia, um, it's delicious. It's like a vanilla, vanilla-y caramelly ice cream with little like honeycomb chunks in it. It's delicious. And yeah, you should try it if you ever visit, if you ever get the chance. The pieces are kind of like orange. So that's what these bits were. And I think actually that these little blobs were made from cutting pieces of the letters. That's kind of what it looks like I've done. And then yeah, arrange the type to look like drips, I guess. Um, I had a really great teacher for this class. I remember that, yeah, she was super supportive and encouraging and was probably one of the reasons why I enjoyed typography and then like felt okay about going back to graphics, you know. This was a brochure or a booklet or something for the City Gallery of their exhibitions. I think the way this is arranged, it was arranged to be folded. This is like page four and 21 next to each other. Remember we got given all these photos and then had to, and I think we got given the text to a layout as well. We had to do pull quotes and things like that. Um, this is where I learned about like hanging the quote mark off the edge there. This whole first typography class was really about learning the rules of typography so that you could then break it later. Like we were told that if you were gonna do a quote, it should have these like single quote marks which now I'm like, I, I would put two because I think it just looks better. And I think that that's a rule you're allowed to break. But um, apparently the proper way to do it was this. I feel like this could use some um, less line space in there. But yeah, I'm, I'm honestly quite surprised to look at this. I thought that I would look at my early typography work and cringe a lot more than I am. Because I think typography is one of those things that um, is that extra layer of polish in design. A lot of student work I look at, or even junior designers in like the first year or so of their career, their typography is what lets them down. Um, having, I don't know, like not enough difference in sizes or weights or whatever for hierarchy, having line lengths that are too long, bad line spacing. Like I said, this feels a little bit too wide, but overall, I think I've done a pretty good job here. And I think honestly, that is a testament to, like I said, I had a really great tutor for this um, class and this was our first time really like learning how to work within a grid which is again something that I think has been super helpful and useful for me as a web designer even though I don't do print stuff like this anymore that's been like definitely a skill that transferred across so yeah this was probably the first project where we really started digging in and learning in detail about that it's really surprising that that wasn't until the third year of design school right I don't know, that seems wrong. Then, then this last project inside of typography it was a calendar for, again, the city gallery that we kept doing stuff for, a uh, calendar of events. This one, I mean, that line spacing is way too wide. You could fit almost another whole line of text within there. I think I was trying to stick to the baseline, um, which meant like I should have bumped up that font if I wanted to do that and have it look good. So yeah, that's something that I would change now. But there's a lot of good details in here, the way I've created hierarchy through font pairings um, and through having like, you know, different weights of things. 
I think that's it's kind of good. Well done, me. Oof, this part. I should take away that congratulations. This is not so great. I think these line lengths seem a little long and like this is all feeling a little too tight, you know, it's too close to the edges. That's definitely something else that I notice in student work and in like junior designer work. Things not breathing enough um, and that's definitely what I've done here. So yeah, my bad. In our third year we also had this class called VCD Business which was essentially all about getting a job. Um, I remember you had to write an elevator pitch for yourself. We talked about portfolios, about CVs, yeah, all of that sort of stuff. And the output was making business cards for yourself. Yep, you can try and pull that phone number if you want. It's not mine anymore. <laughs> Ooh, looking inside these pictures actually of stuff that I was putting in my portfolio, um, I just found another typography thing, which now I remember that type work I was showing you was the second typography class. There had been another one before it. We made this font by hand, like we drew this out and then had to like photocopy letters and stuff, putting it together. Um, that was really fun. So I think that was from second year, if I'm remembering correctly. So just a little bit of heart bag. That probably should have been in the last video. What else have we got in here that I might not have shown? Yeah, it's just that poster that you would have seen if you watched the last video. Also in my third year, I did another um, interactive design class, which is essentially web design. Let's see if I can find... Okay, so we had to do an app for here. Oh, this is probably one of the first wireframes that I ever made. Yep. Um, just as badly drawn as my ones are currently. <laughs> this is really more of a sitemap than a wireframe, isn't it? And just like last time, I don't think I can show you this because we did it in Flash and I don't have my Flash player installed. But let's see if we can see some, oh, here, mockups. Oh, look at that old iPhone. Is that like a 3GS or something? Um, so I was doing an app for Snapper, which was the bus system in Wellington. So I think you would click on these bubbles to do stuff. Let's see if we've got anything else in here. Okay, I was kind of using the fish as an arrow, but I mean, that's kind of a faux pas because I've turned the logo around the wrong way. You probably shouldn't do that. Um, also, this red on black text on red is probably terrible for accessibility. Um, what else have we got? So yeah, I was trying really hard to mimic like actual iPhone buttons in the app so it would look more real, you know? This must be really funny for anyone who is a design student nowadays studying like app design or anything to know that this was kind of like the standard. Like I was kind of, I wasn't the best student in this class by any means, but I got a good grade with this project. And obviously nowadays, I think a lot more would be expected from you, like a much higher level of polish. I think just as the app design industry in general has improved and changed a lot over the years, um, a lot more is expected of students in terms of their work in it too. I don't think that this would get a passing grade if you handed this in in a project today, to be honest. I don't know, if any design school teachers are watching, let me know. What have I got here? Okay, uh, this is another one I can't show you because again, it's Flash. I put all of my eggs into the Flash basket when I was learning web design in university. <sighs> Which meant that like the only HTML and CSS I did was for the website you saw in the last video. Um, and yeah, everything else, I got really good at writing action script, which I guess did teach me a lot about code in general, but um, it's not super useful these days. Oh, do I have a mock-up? Do I have a mock-up? Oh dear, okay. <laughs> You're gonna laugh if you watch the first video. I went back to my music piracy roots for this project, and I made a website about the real effects of music piracy. And so you're meant to click on each one of these tabs um, to learn about it. And the main part was this, are you a pirate? Do I have a mock-up of that section somewhere? Basically you put in, oh, dang, I don't think I can find it. You put in how many CDs you owned, then you estimated from that how many were like copied, I guess. And uh, then it like gave you an estimate of how much like money you'd taken from the music industry, essentially. That was the idea behind that project. Next up, the graphic design class that I had in this third year. Um, one of the projects was, let me open this up so I can spin it around. Do, do, do. One of the projects was making a stamp set, like a stamp collector's thing. I can't remember if we got given a theme for this or not, but 
mine are assembled with inventions from New Zealand's backyards. It was like crazy cool tech things that people had built. Uh, and it was an exercise in designing for a super small thing, right? Because the stamp is tiny. So this involved a lot of test prints to like see how stuff was looking. Uh, I remember I typed this on my actual typewriter that I owned. I owned this right up until I left New Zealand. I lent it to a friend and I never got it back before I left. So I don't know where it is in the world now. Um, but yeah, I wrote this on a typewriter and scanned it in. And yeah, I had it pairing on this classic wallpaper because it felt like it was, I don't know, like someone's mom had hung these um, prints up as like being proud of their kid for inventing them maybe. I don't know. All invented by men, apparently. Um, if I was going back these days, I would definitely try and pick something that um, celebrated women a lot more, but I wasn't thinking about that sort of thing back then. I'm not quite sure what I was going with this with sepia, like half tone thing, but I think it's kind of cool. I think it turned out turned out all right. The typography here could use a lot of work. Um, this is not great. It's funny to me that I like didn't put effort as much effort into the typography here as I did in my typography class, just because this was a graphics class, not a typography class, if it makes sense. Ugh, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, the second assignment of this graphics class produced one of my favorite projects that I worked on in design school. Um, it was called, it was for a design conference. We had to invent our own conference and then create like um, who the speakers were gonna be for it, the theme for it, that sort of thing. So I talked about how design was like, becoming undisciplined and that was like you know things mixing together that sort of thing and I think I went for this news theme because it was like really sensationalized stuff in this little booklet that I was making it's the end of graphic design as we know it you know this giant large font trade gothic I still really like this font I think it's a great font um yeah and I had this newspaper theme for the booklet including a sudoku and some like mock tears and things because you know me I cannot resist a bit of grunge in my design or a bit of like you know realism I guess uh yep so I had good old Johnny Ive speaking at my <laughs> design conference good for me uh, and then the posters for it were really fun so these posters I had these like pun uh headlines that you'd see like you know outside a news agent so dies in graphic homicide like graphic but also graphic you get it yeah yeah so these are really fun to put together I remember um, I don't know coming up with the, like the subtle grungy bits to try and mimic when you print newsprint um, how they how they look uh, but I couldn't actually print it in newsprint because we had to have the posters like wrapping around the booklet it was like a, a pre like, form they gave us so yeah I don't know I just made it look like newsprint though including the tear and stuff like that um, and I had a series of three headlines widow found hanging which is you know you have a word on the other line ah, so good <laughs> um and then i'd done the headings like kind of different because to feel like they were different newspapers if that made sense and then my last pun um yep a sentence is justified ah, yeah I remember my tutor being really into this idea too and helping me come up with puns. It was a fun project to work on. And I still I still really like like newspapers and you're gonna see this coming in foreshadowing into my fourth year of design work. But yeah, this, this was a cool project to work on. I was really proud of that. I actually kept that one in my portfolio for a long time after design school. So that is a look at some of the work that I did in my third year of design school. Definitely you can start to see that I'm getting a little better now. Um, in, in my designs and finding my style a little more. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Stay tuned for the fourth and final video in the series where we're gonna look at the work that I did in my last ever year of design school. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.